Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening via live stream, and thank you for joining us here in person. Welcome to tonight's prayer service. I want to thank Herb, wherever he is. He's probably in the back in the kitchen. Oh, we're right there. I didn't see you. Where's Terry? She's almost done. Okay, so thank you for the wonderful meal. That was wonderful for bringing it in. And Jenny, I want to thank you beforehand for thank you for playing for us tonight. And I want to very welcome Madeline for doing the prayer leader too for the night. You're going to do awesome. If I can have you all please stand. Please stand for the lighting and the Christ candle. Oh, he's on the phone. My brother, James Radloff. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Stay with us, for it is evening. For with you is the fountain of life. Gracious light, pure brightness of our everlasting God in heaven. O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O oh God, most holy and blessed Trinity, you are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The Holy One be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of life and light, who has been with us throughout this day, we give you thanks for Christ our light. As evening falls, let your grace shine upon us, so that with all your people we may live in the light of your love now and through eternity. Amen. Amen. My prayers rise like incense, my hands like the evening sacrifice. I call to you, O God, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Keep guard over my mouth, O Lord. Watch the door of my lips. Keep my heart from slipping into evil. Let me not be busy with evildoers. My eyes are turned to you, O Lord my God. In you I take refuge. Do not deprive me of life. My prayers rise like incense, my hands like the evening sacrifice. God of all beginnings, in creation you breathed into us the gift of life, possessing us with your spirit. Yet we turned away from that gift, seeking to possess our own lives. We have grieved your Holy Spirit with our pride vanity, ambition, greed, and folly. Have mercy on us, that we may walk forth as new creatures, filled once again with the spirit of life and belonging to you through Jesus Christ our Lord.
triune God, giver of grace, Christ of compassion, saving spirit, we open ourselves to you. Frail creatures, we fail, we sin, we eat forbidden fruit. We suffer wrongs that others have done to us. Holy God, transform us from glory to glory into the image of Christ, that we may do justice, walk with mercy, walk humbly with you, and forgive as you have forgiven us. Through your Spirit, who is able to make all things new. Amen. May God, whose mercy is from everlasting to everlasting, forgive us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. We are a forgiven people. Have you ever been just going about your day and a memory hits you and it hits you hard and it stops you dead in your tracks and that memory takes you back to the time like it was freshly happening and the, you remember the smells and you remember the tastes and the emotions that you felt during that memory evoke once again. Whether they be good or bad, they're powerful. That is exactly what the daily office should be. There are moments in time that we remember. And it's a time when we actually take a sacred stop, a statio, if you will, and remember important parts of our faith. Now, the, the Order of St. Luke does not have a prescribed book to read. You can use the book or the Liturgy of Hours, depending on the denomination that you practice. But there's six areas that I want to cover today that will kind of hope, I, I wrote this down, but it's kind of intellectual and it's kind of dry. And I want to add a little bit of flavor to it. So as I read, I'm going to start putting in my two cents worth what they mean to me. The daily office is the church's school of prayer through which the church teaches us ways of prayer which transcend time and place and teach us how to glorify God in Christ as a community of God's people. The daily office refers to a historical pattern of daily prayer in the life of the church which identified times for prayer. These times are referred to hours for prayer. Thus, it is also called the Liturgy of the Hours with a specific focus on each. Lauds, the remembrance of your baptism. They're done in the morning because it's a new day and it's a new life, just like the waters of baptism gave you a new life in Christ and the body of Christ. Then we go into terse. Terse is where we take a moment and we remember the hour in which the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles. So imagine that they're locked in the room and they're afraid and they get a gift that empowers them and they go forth fearlessly. So we remember that mid-morning. Then we go into sext. And sext is the actual hour that Jesus was placed on the cross. My sins put him on that cross. Our sins put him on that cross. Then we go into known. Known is the hour that our Savior died for us. Moment for our redemption. He was the sacrifice for our sins. Then we go into Vespers, evening. Vespers is a time where we look at the day and with the time of uh, confession and awareness and affirmment that we are forgiven. And then we go into Compline, which is your nighttime prayer with you and the Lord before you go to sleep. Now I set on my watch the actual times that they come up. And I can be really busy with my day. And it goes off and I do what uh, Sal read a few weeks ago, a statio, a sacred stop. And I could be with a client, but I have to turn off my alarm. I have to pause 
and stop and realize what is happening in that moment. So a prayer doesn't have to be complicated. Most of us have gone to Reverend Kathy's prayers or teachings, and it just can be quick. It's just an acknowledgement. It could be a sign of the cross. Praise be to God. Take a breath. Breathe in the Spirit and breathe out. So as I go through those, it's a really good piece for me to slow my day down in increments and remember that everything that I am doing, everything that is happening, is not because of my actions. And the daily office helps keep that zeroed in. The order of St. Luke does not require the use of an authorized or official text of offices of the hours of the day. As an inquirer, we encourage you to use the daily office of the denomination for which you are a member. An office is a task or responsibility with which we are entrusted. The responsibility here is to fulfill the church's task of prayer on behalf of the church each day. I like what Brother Dwight wrote, but I'd like to add that it's an honor for me. That it is an honor that he died for me. That I was good enough. That there is room at the table. And for years, I didn't think that. So with me, it's an honor to just periodically through the day have gratitude. And that's as simple as what the daily office can be. stand holy darkness blessed night heaven's answer hidden from our side as we awake God of silence, we embrace your holy night. I have tried you in the fires of affliction. I have taught your soul to grieve in the barren soil of my loneliness there I will plant my seed holy darkness blessed night heaven's answer hidden from our sight as we await you O God of silence, we embrace your holy night. I have taught you the price of compassion. You have stood before the grave. Though my love can seem like a gift, this is the love that saves. Holy darkness, blessed night, heaven's answer hidden from our sight. As we await you, O God of silence, we embrace your holy night. I were there when I raised up the mountain. Can you guide the morning star? Does the hawk take flight when you give command? Why do you doubt my power? Holy darkness, 
blessed night, heaven's answer hidden from our sight. As we await you, O God of silence, we embrace your holy night. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, may be peace in your walls. How I rejoice when they said to me, let us go to the house of Adonai. And now our feet are standing within your gates, Jerusalem. Here the tribes ascend, the tribes of Adonai. They come to praise Adonai's name as God commanded Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be in your walls. May your city be always secure. For the sake of my family and friends, I say peace be within you. For the sake of Adonai, our God, I will seek your good. Glory to you, O Trinity, most holy and blessed. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May peace be in your walls. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 19, verses 25 to 34. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, Aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of the week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying.
please stand for the Canticle of Mary. My soul proclaims your greatness, Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, my Savior. For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you in every generation. You have shown the strength of your arm, you have scattered the proud in their conceit. You have cast the mighty from their thrones. You have lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich have been sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise you made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory be to you. O oh, Trinity most holy and blessed, who is now, ever was, and ever shall be, unto endless ages. Amen. A reading for meditation and reflection, an excerpt from They Walked with God by Max Lucado. Could there have been a greater tragedy for John than a dead Jesus? John didn't know on that Friday what you and I know. He didn't know that Friday's tragedy would be Sunday's triumph. John would later confess that he did not yet understand from the scriptures that Jesus must rise from the dead. That's why what he did on Saturday was so important. We don't know anything about this day. We have no passage to read, no knowledge to share. All we know is this. When Sunday came, John was still present. When Mary Magdalene came looking for him, she found him. You'd think John would have left. Who was to say that the men who crucified Christ wouldn't come after him? Why didn't John get out of town? Perhaps the answer was pragmatic. Perhaps he was taking care of Jesus' mother. Or perhaps he didn't have anywhere else to go. Could be he didn't have any money or energy, or direction, or all the above. Or maybe he lingered because he loved Jesus. To others, Jesus was a miracle worker. To others, Jesus was a master teacher. To others, Jesus was the hope of Israel. But to John, he was all of these and more. To John, Jesus was a friend. The Holy One be with you. And also with you. Let us pray.
Sisters and brothers, in peace, let us pray to the Lord for our needs and for the needs of the world and for the prayers written in our prayer intention book. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create us, create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us by your Holy Spirit. The Holy One be with you. And also with you. O oh God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessings of the day that is past and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours through him who died and rose again for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear our prayer and let our cry come to you for Sister Elizabeth, our abbot, the offices of the general chapter, Brother George, Sister Jeanette, and Sister Heather, for our priors, for our brothers and sisters in the order, for a sense of community with others in the order, for grace to live for you and with each other in faithfully living our rule of life and service. Merciful God. Hear our prayer. Compassionate God, hear our prayers. Answer them according to your will and make us channels of your infinite grace. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer for the order of St. Luke. O shepherd, shepherd of, of us, us all, all who, who inspired, inspired your servant, St. Luke, Luke, the physician, to set forth in the gospel the love and healing power of Jesus, Jesus. grant we ask you your spirit in the order of St. Luke, that we may proclaim the apostolic hope, magnify the sacraments, and embody Christ's healing grace for all creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Please stand at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. God of glory, you have brought us to this feast, crowning these joyous 50 days. Pour out upon us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we may embody the kingdom of justice and peace of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Now we leave all our God with heart and hands and voices whose wondrous things 
things have done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today oh may this gracious god through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us preserve us in his grace and guide us in distress and free us from all sin till heaven we possess all praise and thanks to god the father now be given the son and spirit blessed who reigns in highest heaven eternal triune god whose earth and heaven adore for thus it was is now and shall be May the Spirit who hovered above the water when the world was created breathe into us new life in Jesus Christ. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the eternal Word became incarnate make us joyful in Christ's service. May the Spirit who set the church on fire on the day of Pentecost bring alive a world where peace and justice reign. Amen. 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 Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny, for the music. Thank you very, very much, Chris, for reading. Wonderful job, Gretchen. Hand to her. Excellent. And thank you, Madeline, very, very much. Very well done. Thank you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to adjourn back to the fellowship room and we've got a few pieces of business we need to discuss that we can get out of the way before the evening's over. So thank you, bless you, and we'll see you out back. Well done. Well done. <laughs>